Hey everyone, thank you so much for clicking on this video and watching it. In a minute, we'll get to uh, video four of, of Practical Prayer. Um, but you might notice that there's a change of venue. Um, I'm actually recording from Mosaic Church now. And I uh, just wanted to share some news with you. Uh, this Sunday, May 31st, we will have our first uh, online worship. It's our first worship, anything Mosaic related. So we're really nervous and excited to to be worshiping with you in this capacity. And, and we invite you, there's more information on our website, and, and the website is mosaicparaland.org, but all the information is in the description below. Uh, I once again, thank you, and, and, and we'll see you on Sunday. Peace. In prayer, uh, listening for God's voice is just as important as pouring our hearts out to God. I know in 1 Kings, there's a story about Elijah, a prophet, that was inside a cave waiting for God to appear. At first, there was a powerful wind that tore through the mountains and, and shattered all the rocks. And then after that wind, there was an earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, you know, which is like totally normal. However, God wasn't in any of those three powerful, attention-grabbing displays of nature's power. And you couldn't really blame anyone to assume that God would show up in one of those elements. So how did God show up? Well, after the fire, the text says that there was a sound, a, a thin, quiet sound. And then when Elijah heard that, he went out to meet God. See, God came uh, not in a windstorm, not in an earthquake, not in a fire, but in a thin, quiet sound, almost like a whisper. And it's okay if that doesn't make sense. It's okay to be like, wait, what? Because wouldn't it make more sense for God and for us if, if God used more obvious ways to communicate with us? From an early age, we often figure out that to be heard, one needs to be loud. And in our current culture, I think this still holds true. Whoever is the loudest wins the argument. A, a small, thin, quiet voice can be so easy to miss and, and to ignore. There are so many things today competing for our attention. And, and we have so much noise in our lives. It, it's not uncommon to have music playing in the background while I'm working or while I'm driving or while I'm exercising or falling asleep or, or just to fill the silence with something. Sometimes the TV can serve as an excellent source of white noise while we're on our computers uh, surfing the web. I mean, there's, there's so much noise all around us all the time. So a, a quiet, thin voice, a whisper can be so easy to miss. So then why wouldn't God use a louder and more attention-grabbing method today? Like a, a loud, booming voice from the heavens that said, Joseph would definitely get my attention. Or, or a warring wind that comes out and, and blows the leaves and it spells my names with the leaves. That, that would get my attention. Or why not bring back the burning bush? Those those would be harder to ignore than, than a whisper. But you know, it turns out that it can be just as easy to ignore loud and obvious things. Like people who live next to an airport. At first, when the planes are flying over their houses, it can be jarring. But after a while, they get used to it. They get accustomed to it and they work around it. In fact, the Israelites, they, they saw a pillar of smoke guiding their path during the day and then a pillar of fire guiding them at night. They also witnessed the Red Sea part and they walked on dry land. And yet, and yet they still created a golden calf because reasons. Maybe one of the reasons why God chooses to speak to us in a small, still voice is because the intimate nature of a whisper. In order to be able to whisper something, we need to be very close to the person, both physically and, and emotionally. Not just anyone can come and whisper in our ear. And we definitely don't choose to whisper in complete strangers' ears because, because that's, that's weird. And if a stranger leans into us to whisper, we, we recoil at the horror and the violation of our, of our personal space. And if someone doesn't know how to whisper, they may lose that privilege. 
Like if they use too much breath in their whisper and, and leave your ear feeling a bit moist. This is not good. First of all, I already told her I got a girlfriend. Second, you just put your bare lips on my ear. We leave a mental note to ourselves saying, they ain't never whispering in my ear ever again. We only, we only let those who we trust to have the privilege of getting that close to share information with us. That's why, that's why whispering sweet nothings only occur between lovers. You don't do that to strangers because harassment. And the funny thing is, sometimes, sometimes it's the quiet voice that really get our attentions. I knew I was in deep trouble, not when my parents yelled at me, but when my parents lowered their voice and talked to me. In fact, there was one time when I got into an argument with my wife, and I ended up saying something stupid that I knew I'd regret it as soon as it left my mouth. Now, I can't remember what the fight was about, and I honestly can't remember what stupid thing I said, but I do remember her response. She stopped, and she lowered her voice, and almost on a whisper level, she said, let's just wait until we go home and then we'll sort everything out. And I remember just like freezing, scared for my life, thinking, okay, I need to stall as much as possible from going home because if I go home, that might be it for me. It's, it's why we preachers, when we really want to drive home a point, we don't really yell it, we, we lower our voices so that the people have to lean in almost and really listen to what we have to say. But also, when, when someone's about to whisper, we, we know that they have something we might really, really want to hear. There is an excitement that stirs up within us when we're at a public space and our friend looks to the left and looks to the right and leans in and says, I have something to tell you. And it compels us to lean in too because we want to hear what they have to say. And that's why I think God chooses to whisper to us in that still, small, quiet, thin voice. It's more intimate. It's more personal. I mean, sure, at first it may be easy to ignore and or overlook, but once we hear God's voice, it becomes increasingly difficult to ignore. And God's voice becomes more recognizable the more we spend time listening for God's voice through prayer. The more we pray, the more we communion with God, the more we recognize God's voice and the harder it is to ignore it or to miss it. So it's important to take heart the psalmist's words from Psalm 46, 10. That's enough. Now know that I am God. Like, that's enough of all that noise that pollutes your ears, your minds, and your souls. That's enough of all your prayer requests and prayers lists and supplications. That's, that's enough. Just be and know that I am God. So continue in deepening your relationship with God through prayer. Take moments from your day where you can pause and still your busy mind to listen for God's voice saying, that's enough. Now know that I am God.